Hey, 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 my Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your Twin Flame read for June 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mel for short, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Joining the Circle Productions. And uh, ready to dive in with something a little bit different this time. You know, every time I do a new zodiacal series, uh, Aries through Pisces, my guides work with me a little bit different uh uh, twist it a little bit, <laughs> twerk it a little, I don't know. Um, this uh, These reads this time around are called The Truth About uh, Twin Flame Read. So the truth about your twin flame relationship read is what we are about to embark on to Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, Aries through Pisces. So buckle in, you're my first one. Didn't want to do these readings, felt like twin flames, like who cares about your twin flame, the world's on fire. And so I had a little chat with my guides about it. We actually did a live stream this morning. I'm doing this on Tuesday. What is today? The 7th, the 8th. Uh, easy to lose to uh, track of day. Today is the 9th. Today is uh, the 9th. Tuesday the 9th I'm doing this. So this morning uh, we did a live stream here on YouTube. And I put the link um, in uh, the description box below all about <laughs> the truth about uh, Twin Flames. So uh, it would save some time in explaining what these are now. Cool, cool. Um... So go watch that if you haven't already. But if you're familiar with my work, you already know uh, my definition of twin flame. But essentially to say that they are transformative relationships. They are troublesome, <laughs> tricky, traumatic, traumatizing, but very transformative relationships that teach you how to love yourself, that teach you how to heal yourself. Um, not just romantic sexual, every variety of relationship you can think of, they can show up in. They are pre-incarnational agreements. We go into that in the many videos that I actually have in the description box uh, on the subject. This is really about learning uh, and answering a couple of questions in, in this particular read for June 2020. Um, how does this uh, Twin Flame contract transform me? How is it, does it transform me? Uh, how can I work with it? And how is this Twin Flame making me a better soulmate? Because that's what Twin Flame relationships do. They teach you how to be the mate of your own soul, to give yourself the love that only you can give yourself, which makes you a better soulmate. And of course, tracks in, attracts in soulmates of different shapes, sizes, and varieties in your life. The soulmate contract is you help each other heal. So there's a difference between teaching somebody to how to heal themselves and helping them heal. Therein lies the difference between those two soul contracts. Let's have a look at yours, shall we? Remember, this is general. Uh, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. It's only 13 cards, so uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this as we really look at, like, okay, how can we learn from these Twin Flame contracts, or at least one of them for this month, shall we? Take a nice deep breath. The breath is the key, my Aries brethren. The breath is the key. So let us begin. We're going to start with the Caroline Mace Archetype card. One for you and one for the Twin Flame. We're not doing Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine this time. First card down will be you, the Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, or for the Cross Watcher, they would be the second card down, I guess, the the, the person. I guess that would be the Cross Watcher position. Um, but we're not doing Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine this time. This is party number one and party number two. You are party number one. The Twin Flamer is party number two. Saves time. Let's get up in this gig. Here we go. Here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved, please. What is the dominant archetype for this Aries collective? Sun, moon, rising, Venus sign in this twin flame contract for June 2020 or timeless whenever they're supposed to come across it I have to remember these are also timeless you send them to people when they're supposed to find them so please what is the dominant archetype for this Aries Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign in this twin flame contract for June 2020 or timeless just to get us started <laughs> well you guys and guys ain't messing around you are dealing with the addict archetype now look not an art a, a, a card anybody wants to see uh, pop up in a reading representing themselves but do keep in mind whether you like that word or not everybody has their addictions number one number two 
Every archetype is neutral. It's shadow and it's light, a 50-50 deal. So where are you on the spectrum in, in terms of the lead and gold, the toxicity and the healing of your addictions, considering everybody has them? And I always just like to throw this in there. The physical, tangible ones people may not have, like that might not be like smoking or drinking or things like that. Um, but to have an addiction to being right, just as toxic. Codependency just as toxic, right? So addiction in all of its forms. No bueno. Uh, the shadow attribute here compromises integrity and honesty, allows an addictive pattern to have authority over your inner spirit. So are you using this twin flame relationship to medicate some kind of pain in your life? Perhaps the pain of loneliness, perhaps the pain of... Remember, this does not have to be a romantic sexual relationship probably is, because that's usually what shows up on YouTube and what people are looking for, so of course they're going to draw that into their energy fields. Uh, but really look at, um, are you compromising your integrity and honesty? Are you being honest with yourself about what you really want in this relationship? Uh, or are you having, or are you allowing an addictive pattern or someone else to have authority over your inner spirit? Because the light attribute helps you recognize and confront addictive behavior behavior so even if you just get from this well what is this what is this twin flame teacher right the truth about it, it's teaching me the truth what is the truth about this relationship is there what are uh, can i recognize and confront the addictive behavior maybe in myself maybe in the other person now look twin flames if they are sexual romantic passionate too hot not to cool down. Uh, very, very addictive in that sense is that the biochemical <laughs> aspect of the sexuality and the sensuality, if that is in play here, can be very addictive and can make people do things they ordinarily would never do. But do understand, when we reach for those states of heightened sexuality, sensuality, orgasm, and release, we are medicating ourselves. But if we are, as the card indicates, compromises integrity and honesty over it, it's no good. It's it, No matter how good it is, it's got that lead weight attached to it. So very, very right out of that first card down for these types of readings does make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three Daughters of the Moon cards. Simple timeline, past, present, future. You know how I love doing them. Uh, to have a look at you, my Aries, and see where you've been, where you are, and where you're going in this contract so that you can really get how can I work with it, right? How can I work with this twin flame contract, fulfill my part of it, and become a better soulmate? Breathe. I know, it's a little revolutionary. I like it. <laughs> Please, my goddesses. One card. Well, we'll do these one at a time. Please, for the Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign in this Twin Flame contract for June 2020. Where have they been? Where have they been in this contract? Daughters of the Moon, Tarot, one of my favorite decks. Uh, where are they now in this contract? Felt that one really clearly. And where are they going in this twin flame contract. Ooh, I got a peek. I didn't mean to, but I will share with you right away. So, coming from a place of play. Come on. I really get the feeling with this addict archetype that this is probably sexual romantic if the card of play is involved there. The six of flames in this deck is Bastet. Uh, the Egyptian solar cat goddess, though most people consider a black a black cat associated with the moon. There's not really a black cat here, but usually you do see best as a black cat. You think of her as lunar. She's actually solar. So probably a great deal of rollicking, frolicking passion and, and heat going on here, or at least a lot of fun in the beginning. Where are they now? Well, courage and strength. Like to see that. So maybe you are in that place of really turning to your own heart, finding the bravery and the courage to love yourself, to give yourself what you need, to walk the path of true love. Now look, for us to openly love in a twin flame contract, no matter what happens, takes a kind of courage. That is blessing the other person, blessing yourself, knowing that there's a higher purpose here, but that you're probably not going to get what you want, but that you are going to get what you need. That's rough. 
but I like that you've got the card of courage there because that is what it takes. This is about you breaking the chains around your heart that have nothing to do with this person or this relationship, but the relationship is here to teach you how to learn, how to love that, to, teaching you how to heal that. And really, what comes up after that is the Ace of Cups, a new beginning of happiness, a new emotion comes in. So while the emotional release part of this uh, may be underway or ongoing, it's not being indicated here for you right now, with the Addict Archetype, it is kind of saying there that if you can have the courage, not to necessarily white knuckle or cold turkey or that kind of language, but to really tend to your own heart, to give yourself the love that only you can highly recommend highly recommend inner child work in any modality that you can jump into just to start with and then understand there are many different ways of doing it um it really is there's so many derivations of inner child work uh, psychologically spiritually metaphysically going on um but that there's a real healing for you in terms of experiencing the ace of cups of the happiness that you give yourself so my sense is as though there might have been a lot of fun and play here in terms of uh because it, a dependency is indicated with the addict archetype that this is really about you finding your own inherent happiness your own but it is going to take courage strength the grace of fortitude look up the grace of fortitude it's in my book uh I talk about the Grace of Fortitude a lot. Uh, one of the heart chakra graces, and particularly connected with Beltane, which we are still in, but will soon be going into uh, Letha, Summer Solstice. So let's get one. Neighbors walking by. Let's get one for the Divine Masculine. Oh, sorry, for the Divine Masculine. For the Twin Flamer here. So that's you. So we get where you're coming from. Let's see who you're dealing with, and we'll do the same for them with three of the Mythic Tarot. Breathe. I know I like this spread a lot. I could see myself doing this with clients easily and building upon it for hours. <sighs> so, my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, what? who is the twin flame to this addict archetype, this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, venusite addict archetype, alchemizing from shadow to light, lead to gold? Who is the twin flame in this relationship? for June 2020 or timeless for this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Uh, twin flame contract. Oh, shit. The martyr. Are you kidding me? An addict and a martyr? Oh, not a new relationship structure. The shadow attribute. You're going to love this word. Addiction to self-pity. We've got an addict and the word addiction written on this card at the bottom. So someone who's dealing with issues of addiction to self-pity. So you're not necessarily looking at somebody who is overt, who wouldn't, they wouldn't have a superior ego, they would have the inferior, that they would play that sort of martyrdom role, get down off the cross, somebody needs the wood, using their pain and suffering to manipulate others rather than heal them. However, that's what a martyr is in its negative, in its shadow, in its lead. This is one of the divine family archetypes. By the way, I forgot to say, the addict archetype is one of the wild card. You never know what you're going to get with a wild card, and certainly never know what you're going to get with an addict. But with the divine family, this could be a very, very powerful turning point for both people here. If, if, if you can take the high road, the light attribute, learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause, right? So there is that shadow martyrdom that everybody knows and everybody thinks that's the whole of martyrdom. <laughs> a friend of mine said he went to visit his family back in the holidays, this is decades ago. And he said uh, they were all going out caroling, and the, and the mother totally pulled a martyr deal. She's like, no, I'll just sit here in the dark with my sandwich. You all go out and have fun. And I laughed like for a good 10 minutes. I think I laughed for weeks after that. That is such like an archetypal martyr thing to say in the shadow. But the light attribute would be like, no, we're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to give ourselves to this cause. Whatever it takes, we are going to do that to, like for a martyr for justice, a martyr for love, a martyr for healing, whatever it takes. And it can be service to to oneself as well, and as well as both, you know, a service to a greater cause as well as holographically to oneself. So interesting, but you got to admit, an, an addict and a martyr, that's a lot. But I mean, for, like they said to me, like, these are going to be different. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they are already. Breathe. <sighs> My God, then, please. 
free cards for uh, this uh, Twin Flame Martyr, the Martyr in this Twin Flame uh, contract with this Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Addict, Archetype, June 2020, or Timeless. Where have they been, this Martyr? Where have they been in this relationship? Where are they now, I should say, in this contract, in this relationship? And where are they headed in this contract, in this relationship? Fascinating. I really am enjoying this process a lot, but let's see. Coming from the place of the Empress, all right? So there is definitely a maternal energy here, particularly matched with that Six of Flames there for the Divine Masculine. We might have had a very loving, unconditionally loving, very freeing, very mature situation because the Empress certainly denotes a certain amount of uh, physical and emotional maturity, not necessarily age, but maturity, right? Pregnant, <laughs> right? A nurturer, a certain uh, piece of evolution. Uh, completed that the Empress is the conglomeration of all of the queens in the tarot. So I can feel that. Uh, so there, not just something regal about this uh, this martyr archetype, but maybe someone who has experience, who has carried, who has labored. Um, and there is still very much, I feel, the vibe on that, that unconditional, almost like mother love. So again, though I get the playful part of that, this could also be mother-child. An addict child and a martyr mother in a twin flame contract? Oh, never. No, of course that's a thing. Um, and the loyalty is there. <laughs> and, the, and the three of wands there. It's like, okay, we've got the foundation. We know what this is. I'm in. I'm in. But a martyr to a cause in the light, hopefully, rather than the shadow. So this might be, if like, let's just let's just hypothetically say this is a mother, biologically or otherwise, to a child. doesn't mean they're genetically related, but if you look at it as a mother-child archetype, regardless of gender or genetics, um, to really see that in a twin flame contract, you cannot help the other person heal, but you can teach them how to heal themselves. And that could drive a mother archetype crazy in terms of I want to help but there's nothing I can do to help and all mothers get there sooner or later with their own children literal uh, figurative or otherwise so there is a loyalty here but um, keep an eye on if the, the Aries keep an eye on that martyr that uh, there is an addiction to self-pity in martyrdom when one has given themselves to a, ca to a cause where at, it, it's, it becomes at all costs after a while, if that hunger, if they don't get what they want, which is at the core of meditating all pain. What do you want? Good. Oh, thank God. Temperance. Okay. So where she's headed is, is to a place of more discipline and more balance uh, with all of that. So this actually feels like considering the Aries has the Ace of Cups in the where uh, they're headed position and the Twin Flame has the Temperance card, that we're looking at something that actually is moving towards healing and balance here, but something that is going to take time. Uh, because we're, because if there's an addiction involved, they're just not healed like that. There's, um, there's pain that has to be addressed, healed, loved, embraced, transformed. Um, and that, that do take a while. That do take time. Though love is the answer. You can't do it for somebody. <laughs> you could you could be by, by their side with them, um, but uh, but if someone is addicted to self pity and making it about them, while the other person is actually being strong and being brave, hey, it ain't easy. It happens, but it, it doesn't make it easier. Sometimes it's not always about being easy. It's about what we need at that moment, right? So uh, let's keep going. What I love about this spread is with. Eight done, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are going to get to the core with the next four decks, sort of like oracle cards. We've got the story, but what we're going to do is I split up the Chuck Spisano love pack again into the light side of the deck, the luck, the healing, and the grace suit, and the problem suit to really ask in terms of, you know, uh, how does this trans uh, how does this twin flame contract transform me how is it transforming me how can i work with this and how uh, is this twin flame making me a better soulmate we're going to look at the problem what's the problem here what's the thing that you can't help each other heal but that you are learning how to heal as a result of the relationship that only you can heal it yourself breathe 
having those three questions, I think, in the beginning, are just like, how can I work this? How can I work with this? So my ascended masters of twin flame contracts. I know I got ahead of myself. Please, one guard and clarity for this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus. I'm the whole contract together, not just... Uh, not just the, the Aries addict or the twin flame martyr. What is what is the problem here? What is the element of lead? What is the lesson? What is the thing that needs to be addressed and healed in this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign? Twin flame contract, timeless. But uh, right now for June 2020, what have you got? What is the problemo? My ascended masters is doubt. Keep that in mind. Doubt. Like, that's a big word. Doubt. Uh, we all have our doubts. Doubting is part of a healthy belief system process, right? It's like you can believe something and doubt it and then test it and experience it on and off throughout a lifetime. Different things. Faith without doubt to me is dangerous, right? It's like you want to keep all of that in balance and maybe with the temperance card that's indicated here a bit. This card of doubt isn't just about the, uh, I keep wanting to say the divine masculine, not just about the twin flame martyr, though I am putting it on that side of the table, but the other half of the deck is going to give us in a way the remedy. So this is where where you're getting a little a little clue, a tip, a hint here from the Ascended Masters, regardless of the doubt that's on the table. Here's the piece of luck that you can focus on, the piece of healing that you can focus on, or the piece of grace that you can focus on that will help you learn to heal yourself and help you learn to love yourself. Breathe. My Ascended Masters, please, one card, a piece of luck, a piece of healing, a piece of grace for this Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign Twin Flame contract for June 2020 or Timeless, please, considering the problem is one of doubt. My Ascended Masters of Twin Flame contracts, what is the piece of luck, the piece of grace, or the piece of healing for the Aries Collective? Just delight. So, though there is doubt... There is delight here. Now, <laughs> keeping in mind we've got this Ace of Cups here, then this card of delight, come here. These two do kind of sort of go hand in hand, though uh, the, the woman in the Ace of Cups is solitary. The woman in the uh, luck card of delight is, is, is with others. So it does feel like delight as that spiritual lucky thing that you stumble into is going to help shed some light on some of this doubt, like delight. What does it mean to delight? There's an upliftment. There's a seeing things from a more positive point of view. It's like when you're really delighted by something as a surprise, you're like, oh my god, I wasn't expecting that. That's so delightful. That there is something uplifting here. And again, just because I'm putting it on that side of the table doesn't mean that it's the addict that's a delight and the martyr that's all a doubt or in doubt. But there's definitely that chemistry. So look at the balance between delight and doubt here, whether you are the Aries or, uh, or, or the twin flame uh, contract partner here. Because if there's no delight left in it, you really have to look at how you can reignite that for yourself. And it feels like there is that healing process in play here, but that doubts are getting in the way. And, and doubts need to be addressed, too. I love the one in me that doubts. Like I said, it's like, I don't want to be a true believer. I don't want to be a true believer, either. Uh, but, uh, you know, to keep that in mind, to keep that... We're allowed to question, we're allowed that doubting is part of the process. Doubting doesn't mean we've lost faith. It means that there's an expansion going on within us, and we're certainly allowed to ask the questions whether or not we will ever get or understand the answers. Whole other different story, but that's mysticism for you. Three more cards left. We're going to get an angel for you from the Healing with the Angels Oracle. And again, no matter who's watching this, these next three cards that hit the table will be of service. Breathe. My angels, please, one card in clarity for the Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signed for this overall twin flame contract for them for June 2020 or timeless. Please, what have you got for them, my Aries Collective? Uh, what is the healing with the angels oracle, the angel that is extending their hand to help them heal individually in 
This twin flame contract, Aries Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign, Timeless, June 2020 is Miracles. Wow. Look, when the Angel of Miracles shows up, you got to get that things could defy explanation, <laughs> right? Because miracles are not supposed to make sense. Sometimes in retrospect they do. Uh, if there's a symbolic element or... But you, there's no such thing as a negative miracle. People are like, oh, that was what a horrible miracle that was. You said nobody ever, right? Miracles are always what? A delight. And they're often prefaced by what? Doubt. So keeping in mind that that is the problem, doubt, and that there is something lucky about delight here, that there really may be a, maybe, according to the angel of miracles, that there is this drop of light that's brought down. Like, do you see how the drop of light lands on the angel's finger? Just like this intersection, and that's all it's going to take is this just little boop, this little drop of light that transforms lead to gold here, that brings a healing, but my sense is each individually, which means that one might get it before the other, right? Depending on who's watching it, depending. But it kind of feels like they're both in a healing uh, movement or direction. And looking at the balance of tarot cards here, the, the Aries, you've got one card. You've got the card of strength. They've got two. The twin here has got the Empress and Temperance, which is a little hard to say. Em the Empress, the Empress of Temperance. Um, Definitely moving more in that spiritual direction, keeping in mind as well this is a divine family archetype. It, it feels like there's healing going on here. Um, but that martyr card there and the addict card there are kind of saying this is this is a knockdown drag out twin flame too. I could I could see this being familial, if not romantic sexual. I could see this being between two family members very easily. Uh, let's keep going. Let's get you a healing with the angels. Uh, sorry, wrong deck. Uh, the Whispers of Love Oracle, the Voices of the Higher Selves, uh, just one for the whole contract itself. Breathe. I got an interesting shift of frequency there as I started working, as I started just even shuffling the deck. Please, the higher selves of all involved. One card in clarity for the Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs with this twin flame contract they find themselves in for June 2020, please. What have you got for them, whether it is for the Aries addict or the twin flame martyr, what is, or both, what is the message for the higher, from the higher selves of all involved? to the participants in this twin flame contract. Act as if your partner is here. Now this is a very powerful card. I don't know how that applies here. This might be one of those things that only the people watching get. Um, act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you. So you will always consider them. Now I'm going to say that that is going to go more towards the addict side, just in my vibrational opinion, because of that compromising honesty and integrity that is ever afoot with the addict archetype. Um, but to the point, even with the martyr here to act as if their partner is here, it feels like that would exacerbate the martyrdom. Does that make sense? Then what should I do? What should I do? Let me carrying this load, uh, and particularly if there is an addiction to self-pity, that sort of thinking, uh, well, maybe could move them to that thing of temperance where they're like, you know what? Particularly if they are moving in this more spiritual aware place and wanting to be more unconditional loving, unconditionally loving, um, considering where they are in terms of their finding their own way. Because with this Empress card in the past, there might be a very strong, but I'm worried, right? Almost like the shadow mother to the Empress level, right? I'm worried about them wanting to control them for their own good, which if it's an adult, and if it's not a mother-child relationship, you know what I mean? It's just not, it's not healthy. It's not toxic. But there's a twin flame for you. Toxic twin flames. Let's get you uh, one more card here. This will be our final card down. Number 13, of course, a Healing Mantra uh, card from the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. I would think, if anything, Twin Flame Relationships, since he's the one who redefined Twin Flame and Soulmate for me. Thank you, Matt Kahn. Bless your heart, bless your mind, bless your soul. Uh, that th this deck is so helpful in these readings and for my clients and for myself. 
So again, it doesn't matter who's watching this, whether you're the Aries or the twin, cross watcher, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, this mantra will help you each heal individually. Breathe. My Ascended Masters of Twin Flame Contracts, please, one card in clarity, the perfect healing mantra for this Aries Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, signs in this Twin Flame Contract. Both sides, what is the perfect mantra for them, June 2020? What do the twins need? What do these Aries twins need? The perfect healing mantra for June 2020 or timeless in this Twin Flame Contract. What do they got? What do they got? What do they got? What do they got? Unhooking the past, such a great card. I think this is the first one I ever got when I pulled the, uh, when I first got the deck. Unhooking the past, there is nothing to regret when I learn from my past. Unhooking the past, there is nothing to regret when I learn from my past. Bow. Uh, shall we? You know how I do like to read from the bookie book because it gives just so much more. Uh, unhooking. Uh, the past. There is nothing to regret when I learn from my past. When you unhook the past, you are able to see crucial moments of growth from fresh perspectives. This allows you to see the mistakes of your past as catalysts for development, not as something you did wrong. In other words, <laughs> that's unhooking through the past. If it's always something I did wrong, I did wrong, I screwed it up, I, they screwed it up, they screwed it up. Instead, really looking at it um, as catalysts for development, which sucks, but is totally twin flame territory. Uh, it is an opportunity to see how your previous actions could have been better aligned with your highest values. That's becoming a soulmate. That you go like, you know what? I can, next time I will do that better. I will communicate. I will clarify my boundaries, whatever that is. Um, when you learn today the things you didn't know before, you are able to meet your current circumstances with renewed clarity. So the past can be unhooked instead of repeated. That went into somebody's heart chakra. I just felt it. Uh, this mantra is ideal for overcoming self-criticism, releasing shame, and being more open-minded. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I do love this spread. So miracles and unhooking the path, acting as if your partner is here with you, that those three uh, elements, the angel, the higher self, and the ascended master of, twin, uh, of your twin flame contract, if you want to look at it that way, are offering that. So now what I'm going to do, and I will take a picture of this and pop it up uh, in, in edits, is we're just going to go through it really, really quickly and get you an overview. Shall we? Take a nice deep breath. Magic clap. We've got the Addict Archetype in the Shadow Attribute. Compromising integrity and honesty allows an addictive pattern to have authority over your inner spirit. And uh, the Light Attribute helps you recognize and confront addictive behavior. So for the Aries, this represents the Aries in the contract, uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, to really get that you are learning how to heal your addictive patterns. You are learning how to love the addictive voices inside of you without them taking over. And certainly it does feel like where you've been in this con <laughs> this, this contract with Bastet, that the, the Six of Flames, that this was very fiery, that this was playful though. Like you might have had a very, very playful, fun relationship with this martyr archetype. We'll get there in a minute. But how we go from that solar energy of the Six of Flames into a deeper major arcana flame energy there of courage, right? The, the card always with a lion in some way, shape, or form. That solar energy of the sun of the emotional endurance that it takes to what? To feel what you're feeling and heal what you're feeling. Like you're feeling and healing, there's purpose behind them rhyming that way. So to really pray for the grace of fortitude, to do the brave thing, the courageous thing, to walk the hero's journey on this one it might not be easy, but feels like it's necessity, a, a, a necessity and does absolutely lead to the One of Cups, the Ace of Cups, happiness, a beginning of happiness, and that does feel very much from inside the self, that sense of happiness that you get by getting high on your own courage, your own kindness, your own compassion that no one can tell you to do. It's something that you do yourself because you are called to do so. So very healing on this side of the table. Jumping over to the Twin Flame, uh, the Martyr, Shadow Attribute, Addiction to Self-Pity in the Shadow, Learning to Transcend 
nature, uh, sorry, learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause. That there is transcendence available here to this martyr. So to kind of break the change, that addiction to self-pity, and that might be a game that these two have played together. The self-pity game, the self-pity, the martyrdom, because addicts can become martyrs very easily, or they can be, uh, from the martyr's point of view, their source of suffering, so that they don't have to actually look at their own behavior and healing process as martyrs. Um, martyrs as martyrs. Uh, the Empress in the past here, I will say it again, feels so supportive, so unconditionally loving, so strongly, but maybe not in the healthiest way possible here. I don't want to go so far as to say, ah, oh, you, you were the addict's mother in a past life, but it kind of has that ring to it. It may not be true, but there is definitely some sort of maternal thing going on here, not just, like if it was a queen, I would need, maybe I wouldn't get this vibe the way I'm getting it uh, from this card of the Empress, but definitely here, uh, a, a maturity involved here, so very easily could be mother-child, either literally or physically. Uh, the Three of Wands, though, very loyal, right? That has a foundation. We already have a relationship astounded, uh, astounded, established where they are right now. So I'm going to pledge my loyalty to this. We're going to see where this goes. We've got it in play. We've got a foundation. Let's see where this goes. At least the loyalty for that and then moving it into temperance. Now what I find interesting about the card temperance in this context, it just hit me, is that... Um, uh, b before their, uh, like in the 20s, the Roaring 20s, before um, uh, the abolitionists, uh, and, and what, what did they call it? Why did that just slip out of my mind? Uh, uh, drawing a blank. Well, it was preceded by the temperance movement. Um, the temperance movement was just, everybody just stopped drinking out of prohibition. Thank you very much, Spirit Guides. They're like, you lived through it, Mark. I'm like, yeah, I remember kind of throwing it in my last life. Um, but that temperance movement is about the using of discipline over time, right? So there is a movement, there, there's something with this addiction, both the addiction to self-pity and this addict, that there is possibly a 12-step aspect available here, whether or not it is the 12-step process in and of itself, but one where over time there is balance and healing made, at least on this uh, martyr's side of the thing. And what's clouding all of this is the problem of doubt. And what's the light, the luck to all of this is that there is a delight. So I'm going to say that it's not that these two don't love each other. They may very well love each other, but that they can't give each other the love that each other wants or the respect that they want from each other just because of the nature of the structure of the relationship and the contract itself but that doesn't mean that they're that they they don't delight each other too i always say this my father was a twin flame contract for me probably the biggest one in terms of setting up my relationships with men duh but that certainly he was delighted with my accomplishments and i loved my father very much so do keep in mind uh, this isn't <laughs> good versus evil. This is a twin flame contract. Um, and, and so with that delight, to get that there are miracles available here, to call to the angel of miracles, no matter who you are in this contract. Angel of miracles, show me a miracle. Show me what I got to do to get one. Usually there is a, a small willingness applied on our part to want to heal, to forgive, etc. To act as if your partner is here, whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you, so you will always consider them. So in all of that process as well as this unhooking of the past there's nothing to regret when i learned from my past and i feel like there is so much healing and a new beginning for both of these people individually i don't know about uh, together that's going to be up to them choice wise whether they walk away from each other completing the contract or if they're related to each other how they right it's like how can i work with this that they're going to really bring some healing to each other but that mantra i'm going to say is really pivotal uh, there's nothing to regret when I learned from my past that's going to help them drop guilt, that's going to help them drop and transmute a lot of pain and create some more space in their relationship, perhaps for more of that delight rather than doubt. And there we have it, my Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs of the First of the Truth About Your Twin Flame reads for June 2020. Uh, I like this spread a lot. I will be glad to keep doing these uh, throughout the week. Uh, so may the Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs be blessed with all that they need in their Twin Flame contracts, not just this one for the month of June 2020, or time us to heal, to grow, to become the best that they can be and fulfill their soul contracts in fulfillment of the divine will. 
for the well-being of all. So mood it be. And so it is. Please, if you would, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and comment in the comment section below. I would like to hear what your take on this is. This does feel like you know each other already. This doesn't feel like, ah, oh, new twin flames coming in. God forbid. Call in your soulmates. Forgive your twin flames. <laughs> That's all. Put it on a t-shirt. Stitch it on a pillow. I want that on my couch. Cool, cool. Otherwise, wishing you the very best and the very blessed, my Aries friends, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Thank you so much for watching. Hail. Farewell, and blessed, blessed be.